the debate on whether to introduce the goods and services tax must now come to an end. We have discussed the issue for the past many years. Some states have been apprehensive about surrendering their taxation jurisdiction. Others want to be adequately compensated. I have discussed the matter with the states both individually and collectively. I do hope we are able to bring a final solution in this course, course of this year and approve the legislative scheme which enables the introduction of the GST. This will streamline tax administration, avoid harassment of business and result in higher tax collection both for the centre and the states. I assure all states that government will be more than fair in dealing with them. Tax administration. The sovereign right of the government to undertake retrospective legislation is unquestionable. However, this power has to be exercised with extreme caution and judiciousness, keeping in mind the impact of each such measure on the economy and the overall investment climate. This government will not ordinarily bring any change retrospectively which creates a fresh liability. Honourable members are aware that consequent upon the retrospective amendment of Income Tax Act 1961 undertaken by the Finance Bill of 2012, a few cases have come up in various courts and other legal fora. These cases are at different stage of pendency and will naturally reach their logical conclusion. At this junction, I would like to convey to this August House and also to the investor community at large that we are committed to providing a stable and predictable taxation regime which would be investor friendly and spur growth. Keeping this in mind, we have decided that henceforth all cases arising out of the retrospective amendments of 2012 in respect of indirect transfers and coming to the notice of assessing officers will be scrutinized by a high level committee to be constituted by the CBDT before any action is initiated in such cases. I hope the investor community both within India and abroad will repose confidence on our stated position and participate in India's growth story with renewed vigor. Tax demand of more than 4 lakh crores is under dispute and litigation before various courts and appellate authorities. This is one of the serious concerns of all taxpayers in the country. In order to reduce litigation in direct taxes, I propose to make certain legislative and administrative changes. Currently, an advance ruling can be obtained about tax liability of a non-resident from authority for advance rulings. The facility is not available to resident taxpayers except public sector undertakings. I propose to enable the resident taxpayers to obtain an advance ruling in respect of their income tax liability with a defined threshold. I also propose to strengthen the authority for advance rulings by constituting additional benches. I further propose to enlarge the scope of Income Tax Settlement Commission so that taxpayers may approach the Commission for settlement of disputes. This would continue to be once in a lifetime opportunity for any taxpayer. As an ad administrative measure, I propose to set up a high level committee to interact with trade and industry on a regular basis and ascertain areas where clarity in tax laws is required. Based on recommendations of this committee, the Central Board of Direct Taxes and the Central Board of Excise and Customs shall issue appropriate clarifications wherever considered necessary on tax issues within a period of two months. Transfer pricing is a major area of litigation for both residents and non-residents. I have proposed certain changes in the transfer pricing regulations which I would spell out in part B of my speech. I hope these measures would go a long way in improving the confidence of taxpayers in the tax system and provide certainty and clarity in tax laws.